Now, with the third piece of the puzzle in place, the picture at this point should be much clearer. Knowing where you are allows you to know how to get where you need to go. As we develop our strategy, it's important to keep in mind the goal of security is business process assurance. The information is only an asset to the organization if it supports the primary purpose of the business for generating revenue. Some core elements of the strategy that need to be identified are those resources and constraints that we have to build the overall strategy, and what is the roadmap? How are we planning to get to our desired state? This must include the people, processes, and technologies that we have at our disposal, as well as our defined security architecture. Remember, achieving the desired state is a long-term goal. There's only one way to eat an elephant. So, by doing a lot of short-term projects, it provides little checkpoints along the way to make sure that you are on the right path. Taking a look at some of the resources and constraints that you might have to deal with are things like policy, standards, procedures, and guidelines. Are they there or are they even accurate? What are the layered defenses already in place and what else do we need? What is our current organizational structure and defined roles and responsibilities? What is the current skill set of individuals within our organization? Has there been a risk assessment performed and a business impact assessment performed? These are all things that are going to be critical moving forward. Some of the constraints that we need to take into account are legal and regulatory issues, uh, ethics problems, uh, culture, especially if you're a trans-bordered organization. Uh, organizational structure, again, can be not only a resource, but a major constraint that we have to deal with. And risk tolerance, has it been defined? And if not, we need to go back and define that risk tolerance so we can begin to develop the strategy as a whole. One of the things that our information security managers must take into account are the cultural differences within our organization. These differences can't make it difficult to implement certain strategies and in other instances make options wholly unavailable. In this section, we're going to take a look at some policy, standards, procedures, and guidelines and begin to put our entire strategy together in our environment. Starting with policies and procedures, we need to assign some definition. Policies are simply high-level statements. They should be no longer than one of two sentences. Standards are the metrics or the boundaries that we are going to begin to measure those high-level policy statements by. When we deal with procedures and guidelines, for the information security manager, those are really operational in nature. We really aren't involved in the development of them. But understand, the procedures are the step-by-step -step on how certain things get done in the environment. And guidelines are recommendations on how to execute those procedures. Unfortunately, there just isn't a general consensus on what security architecture is. However, one quote from the Meta Group indicates that without one security architecture, evidence suggests that enterprises will default to a haphazard, reactive tactical approach to constructing a secure environment. This inevitably leads to a waste of resources and introducing actually more vulnerabilities into the environment than the ones that they were trying to fix. Now, in addition to some of the architectural approaches that we've already mentioned, you should be familiar with a few more. Uh, for instance, the architecture framework of MODAF, or the Open Security Architecture, and absolutely the Open Group Architecture Framework known as TOGAF. So, let's talk about some of these controls that we are going to introduce into our environment. What are they? They're simply policies, procedures, practices, and organizational structures to help us prevent undesired events or detect and correct them when they happen. These controls are one of the primary components of our information security strategy. Uh, keeping in mind, they can be physical, technical, or procedural in nature. It really all depends on what is indicated and what is going to be the best fit for the organization. Uh, not everything has to be technically implemented. There are many controls that you can put in place that we indicate are put in place by paper, or it's simply a policy of how we're going to act and behave within our organization. Uh, uh, acceptable use policy would be a good indication of one of these.
Yes, technology is one of the cornerstones of an effective security strategy. It's just not the end-all be-all to it. Technology cannot compensate for manager, cultural, or operational deficiencies. Information security managers need to keep in mind to achieve an effective defense against security incidents, a combination of policies, standards, procedures, security baselines, and guidelines must come together with technology, not to rely on technology to do it for us. Next comes our front line of defense, known as our personnel. Personnel security is an important area of information security. This is where the security manager begins to consider preventive means of securing the organization. We do this traditionally by background checks. They help us prevent the employment of personnel likely to harm our organization. We also need to ensure that we develop an investigation and background check policy and standard that we go by every time. It's also important that we have a written, accepted background check and investigation policy and standard that our organizations operate by. Next is our organizational structure. The structure of an organization can be a liability as well as an asset. Often, the structure of an organization makes it ineffective for us to implement our security strategies. Next, let's look at our organizational structure. You generally have two to choose from, either centralized or decentralized. There are many advantages to having a centralized standardization of security. Uh, however, the structure of an organization usually makes this a very ineffective approach because we're so spread out. That's where decentralized security comes in. The security administrators are normally closer to the end users and absolutely better understand the local issues better than anyone can across the country or across the world. When looking at our organizational structure, these are the things that we need to keep in mind. They need to be closely aligned with those business objectives. They need to have strong senior management sponsorship. We must identify a method in which we are going to monitor our organizational structure as our organization continues to grow. How do we do crisis management? We need to identify an organizational continuance procedure. This is the same as a secession plan. We must have strong risk management in place and appropriate security awareness and training programs as part of everyday business within the organization. Within the personnel and organizational structure, we need to make sure that we have defined all security roles and responsibilities. And we could even include security related measurements in our annual job performance appraisals. To do this, it is important that the information security manager work closely with the personnel director to define these security roles. Next would be a skills assessment. A skills inventory is important to determine the resources that we have available and what we might need to go out and get. Uh, we can do this through a variety of ways. Most common is uh, simple proficiency testing. Next is awareness and education. Uh, we've spoken about this several times and I guarantee you we'll talk about it a few more, but understand that your awareness and education programs are a vital part to the overall security strategy. And in many places, it's also required by law. Usually when we take a look at the training and awareness programs of organizations, we often find that personnel are not aware of the security policies at all, or it's not made known to them that security is important to the organization as a whole. It has to be understood by all employees that security relies on their individual compliance. It can't be done in a vacuum and it can't be done alone. They are the first line of defense. By having a strong awareness and training program, it really is the most cost-effective way to improve overall security in the organization. Another area we find sorely lacking in most organizations is the security personnel themselves. They haven't been adequately trained or continue to be trained to protect the environment. We need to make sure that we are broadening and deepening the appropriate skills for our security personnel. After all, they're the ones that are protecting your data. Yes, it can be difficult and expensive to find the right staff that will be effective in today's 
ever-changing diverse environments, especially with the ever-increasing complexity of our regulatory climate. That's why we indicate that training new or existing personnel is usually the most cost-effective measure. It's easier and there's more loyalty from that individual after you train them than an individual that's already coming to your organization with the skills that you have to then pay for. As we continue to build our training programs, we need to make sure that they are targeted to specific systems, processes, and policies. It's not a one-size-fits-all. You should have specific targeted training for each department within the organization. In our next section, we're going to take a look at some audit and risk assessment methodology and also take a look at how we make sure that our organizations stay in compliance with our regulatory and legal obligations. I'll see you then.